finally, you make the reservation. You put the deposit. You you go on your vacation to the Florida Keys. Thank you. We appreciate your business. But now we want to give you a little tour what to expect and answer most common questions that we get. First question is, what time my trailer will be delivered? Trailer will be delivered between 12 and 3 p.m. Everything depends on the traffic and everything depends how busy we are on that day. Most of the trailers are delivered around one o'clock and this is the check-in time at most of the campgrounds. So most likely it will be there at one o'clock. When you arrive, let's see what's gonna happen next. Okay, so the keys, are gonna be on the table for you. AC will be running. Now I'm gonna show you where is the switch for the lights. If you wanna turn off the lights, the control panel is right here. So all you need to do is push right there. Turn on. This is for the slide out, please do not touch it. Awning control button. Please make sure you will close the awning if you are leaving the camper or if, it, if you're staying overnight, you wanna roll it back in because sometimes wind picks up uh, during the night. So make sure it's, it's rolled back in. It is very expensive to fix it and it's very time consuming. It takes a long time to get the parts. Please roll it back in. It is a $2,000 charge if the Onyx will be broken. Now, those little lights right here, you notice that when I switched off the lights over there, those did not turn off. There's a button right here in the center. You just push it and that's where you turn off the other lights. The same thing on, the, on, on this side right here, boom. It's right on the top and that's how you can turn it off. Very important thing, there's a little switch right here. This is for the refrigerator. Some people take it as a uh, light switch. This is not a light switch. Please leave it on and make sure it's always on because this is the refrigerator switch. So if you're gonna shut it off, your fridge is gonna go down. Your food's gonna be spoiled. Pretty popular is clogging the toilet. Mm. So there is a very simple solution to that. So it's, it's very simple fix. So before you call us, try to do it on your own uh, because it's the most common problem that, that the stuff, uh, if you're not, not gonna flush it long enough, you need to give it a few seconds so it's gonna go down to the tank. It works a little bit different than than a residential uh, toilet. But anyway, if you cannot, um, if you notice that it's getting stuck paper and stuff in there, what you need to do, you need to get the stick from the front of the trailer, from the storage compartment, and just push it through, and it's gonna be uh, unclogged. And the stick you can find right here. Nice. So just take it, push it through. Give it a few pokes and uh, and then flush the, with the water, give it a few pokes and it will go down. So Matt, tell me why you should not have the doors and windows open while the AC is running. Well, it's going to cause that uh, AC is going to start generating water and every, the water is going to keep dripping from AC and from the duct unit. Now, in addition, you can freeze AC unit which is gonna cause a uh, shutdown of AC. It's gonna be working, running. You're gonna hear that it's working, but it's not gonna produce any cold air. It means the unit is frozen. In that case, we're gonna show you. So here's the AC unit uh, controller. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna set it up on the mode where it's gonna say auto, fan, freeze, and the temperature. I would recommend to keep it not lower than 70 uh, to avoid a unit to uh, be frozen. Uh, frozen means it will, it will not produce cold air but the fan will be working. It means the, it, the AC is frozen. And how to unfroze it? Very simple. Now what you need to do if something like this is going to happen, you need to turn on the fan and leave it on on position and do not turn on, you see there's there's no temperature here. It means the AC is not running. It's just a fan running. That, that's what it's going to help you to unfreeze the unit. If the unit is frozen, run it for about 20, 30 minutes like this, and then you can turn on AC again, and it's going to work. Got it. Okay, so there's another thing that we need to tell you because you might get yourself in trouble, and 
lock yourself out. How to avoid this? Very simple. Make sure that your lock is in eye position, like a letter I, like an iPhone. If for some reason you're gonna turn this key this position, you still will be able to pull it out. And for some reason, if you're gonna leave it inside of the trailer, walk outside, close the door, you lock yourself out. So that's the problem. We do have a master keys for those. So if something like this happened, give us a call. We'll, we'll give you a solution, uh, how to unlock yourself. But please make sure that you lock always, use always top lock because we do have a master keys only for top locks. We don't have a master keys for those. For those. So with, with this lock, you will not be able to lock yourself out. But if you will lock it and leave, let's say you'll go to the town and you lose the key, we have to drill the whole, whole lock and replace the whole lock. We only have a master keys for the top lock. So please always lock it on the top lock. All right, next TV. How to set up this TV cable. In the keys, you only have cable. Unfortunately, the onboard and antenna does not work in the keys. We are too far from the stations in Miami and they, they cannot reach it here. So cable is the only option in the keys. Let's turn on the TV. The first thing things you want to do is make sure you want to click on source on the remote control. You, you want to go all the way up to TV, then click enter or OK. Now we're ready to scan the channels. Now very important thing, you need to pull out the TV and look back here. Amplifier, it's, it's only for, for the use with antenna, onboard antenna, not with cable. So if you will see green light right here, you will not be able to pick up any cable channels because the amplifier will scramble the signal. You want to make sure that this is off so you don't see any green lights back here. Now it's ready to scan on cable. Another thing is that uh, this swivels, you can pull it out and you can adjust it the way you want. Now we're ready to the next step, which is we're gonna go to menu. We're gonna use the arrows and go to channel. We're gonna accept the channel and go down here to cable. We are at cable because you can do air or cable. You wanna make sure it's cable. Go down again, auto scan, go down again, start to scan. And then you should see slowly that it's gonna pick up channels right here. So it sometimes it takes quite a few, few minutes, so be patient. But and sometimes the, the channels are picking up like more than a half right here. So that's it. So right over here we have a radio and you can connect Bluetooth. So if you want to play some music from your phone, come right over here. You can click on mode until you get to the BT music, which is Bluetooth music. It'll say unpaired if there's nothing connected. To connect on your phone, just go to the Bluetooth settings in your device and you'll see it at the bottom where it says other devices. If you have an iPhone, if you have an Android, it'll look a little different, but you'll connect to the one that says BT 105. Okay, so to play music and adjust the volume, you notice there are two zones. Zone one is outside, and zone two is inside. And to adjust the volume, you will be adjusting the volume for whichever zone is highlighted. So, for example, if you want to adjust the volume inside, make sure zone two is highlighted. You can change the volume and you'll hear it inside. If you want to change the volume, only outside, make sure zone one is highlighted and change the volume. And if both of them are highlighted, then both of the volumes will change at the same time. And if no zones are highlighted, then you won't be able to change the volume at all. So if you try changing the volume and it won't change, that's why you need to highlight one of the zones or both. So now on to the stove and the oven. The stove is pretty straightforward. The oven's a little bit more tricky, but first the stove, there's three burners, whichever burner is a high setting and a low setting. And then right here is to ignite it, right? And then you can make it higher right here. This is pretty straightforward, easy to figure out. Just put it on a low or high setting and then ignite it, it'll spark. 
So right here is the oven dial. You'll notice when you turn it from off first, there is a little flame and then there are the temperatures. In order to ignite it, there is a safety precaution that you need to push it in and hold it for about 30 seconds. And then after 30 seconds, you turn this to ignite it and it will light. And you can now raise and turn the dial and the oven will be lit. But for example, if you turn the oven off and you try to ignite it, you might see that flame, but if you don't hold it in for long enough and you try to spin it, then it will just turn right off. Now, show me, what's this? This is a little griddle. You can cook your breakfast on it. Now, question is how to connect it to the propane line. I'm gonna open this cabinet right here and then there's a hose. It's a propane hose. You connect down here. A line right here. You pull. Now we want to make sure that this is in up position because propane line is closed when it's up. There's a ring right here. You pull the ring backwards. Back. Push it. Push the hose in. Boom. Okay. And then open the propane line. So I'm going to pull this out and put the uh, propane line hose through here. And I'm, let me just remove this so for the demonstration purposes. We're going to show you, it's going to be a better view. Pull the ring, push this in, release the ring, boom, open the uh, propane line. So as you can see, it's as light and high. So, boom. Try. Boom, there you go. I think I burned my hair because I, <laughs> <laughs> I smell something. <laughs> All right, so another issue you might have, my experience is, in case if you're gonna run out of the propane, you're cooking something and you see, notice that the propane is out. Uh, first, what you wanna do is, walk over to the propane tanks and make sure the propane is, is open. If, uh, if the one tank is empty, you can always switch to the second tank. Here we are, those are two 20 pounders. You wanna make sure that both of them are open. That this one was closed, for example. Now, when this, they are both open, there is a switch right here. This one, it should automatically switch when this tank is out it should automatically switch by itself to the, to the other one. But if for some reason it does not, then you will see red here that is out of propane. And all you need to do is just turn it. And you see that little nose right here? Mm -hmm. It's pointing which, from which uh, tank you have a supply from. So it's very simple. So make sure that both of them are open and then just turn the, the, turn the knob right here. And this is how it normally looks, right? Yes. So to access these tanks, you just pull this off? Yes, this is a cover. Uh, so you just pull this up. Boom. Oh. And now you can access the tanks? Yeah. Okay. To put it back, back on, you just push it. Easy. All right. Fireplace. This is LED fireplace. It's also electric heater, so in those colder nights in January, uh, overnight, you can use it as a heater. In order to turn this on, you gotta push this button to the right, the first button to the right, and now it's in on position. Now the second button is gonna be uh, the lights. It's, it's, there are three different options. So you got red, you got blue, and you got blue and red. So this is just for the decoration purposes. The next one is low heat. You're gonna push it one more time, it's gonna be high. One more time, it's gonna be zero. So it's gonna be just as a decoration. The next one is, the next one is the temperature. You can set up the temperature, desired temperature, 76, 78. The next one is the timer. That's the last button to the left. So it will shut off automatically. Now I set it up, I can, I can feel the heat already. So you can switch it off by pushing the third one. 
So it says zero, zero. Cool. Or go with the temperature all the way down, it's gonna go back to the zero again. So in case if uh, for some reason you notice the water, that water is not draining in the sink or it's not draining in the bathtub, uh, the solution for this is you need to pull out the valves outside. If for some reason they are not pulled out, we will show you how to do that. It's very simple. Okay, so you need to walk outside of the trailer, go back there, and then you're gonna notice some trailers have a two connection, some trailers have one. If you have two, you need to look for both underneath of the trailer, you will see a connection like this. This one actually have one, so as you can see, the valves are closed. That's why it will cause the water to uh, not be drained in the, in the sink or that tap. So this one is for the toilet, pull it, and this one is for the bathroom and the kitchen. Just leave it uh, open like this. That's it, problem solved.